This week, in a handful of minutes, we'll be teaching you a nice beginner's architectural project so you can build yourself a great little home with a breakfast nook, lots of stairs, and everything else. Just don't expect elephants to like you very much when you're done. It's no secret that sometimes you can be made to feel bad about how smart you are, or to doubt the validity of something that you've sunk a lot of time and energy into learning. Maybe you feel like most people don't get you or what you've studied, and that this makes them idiots. Luckily for you smiley consumers out there, we're about to review something that has been carefully constructed by many of the smartest and most insecure minds humanity has to offer. Yes, this week we're reviewing the Ivory Tower. As much as I'd like there to be a physical one, the ivory tower is actually a metaphor. Not that that stopped third world countries from manufacturing them and then having first world companies sell them back to us at a ridiculous markup. There's an older, specifically Judeo-Christian version of the term which refers to noble purity, but ever since the 1800s, everybody's taken this metaphor to refer to intellectuals, usually writers, philosophers, or scientists, who isolate themselves from other people through their profession, or even other people who are in their profession but don't share their particular speciality. It's not mandatory to look down your nose at people outside your tiny circle of humanity, but it certainly does help to flesh out the stereotypical image of an ivory tower. Of course, you could actually physically isolate yourself, but the real brick and mortar of an ivory tower would be knowledge and language. Now, the former isn't such a big deal as long as it's freely available and is not hidden behind, say, terrifyingly high tuition fees. But the latter involves intentionally convoluted use of language and the flat-out invention of unnecessary new words. Nice. Now, this is a lot more excusable with scientists, as they're actually discovering new things all the time that require new terms with which to identify them. But for everybody else, literary theorists in particular, I can't help but, like Noam Chomsky, get a little suspicious when four and five and six syllable words start getting thrown into the mix. See, I often feel that there's a kind of vocabulary penis envy going on. See, if you want to mingle in the same room with that physicist over there who's talking about quarks, you'd better have a complicated theory that nobody can understand. He has a complicated theory that nobody can understand. Why shouldn't I have a complicated theory that nobody can understand? This isn't to say that literary theorists don't contribute anything to society. I can't stress enough that this review is not anti-intellectual. It's anti-obscurantism. See, we need intelligent, educated people to do space travel, to explore niche fields and ideas, to solve intricate problems, and to design internet fads for us to all get excited about and then get sick of in three months. Ivory Tower obscurantism can actually give you crazy power if done in tandem with a bunch of other guys. Say you run a company, or even a country, and you do everything you can to convince your employees or the public that the way you're doing things is being done for reasons their little heads can't understand. Then you can do all sorts of things without people noticing. So, should you get an ivory tower? Overall, I'd say no. They're not as dangerous as willful ignorance, but anyone living in an ivory tower is clearly putting their own needs ahead of the many, and furthering the dangerous idea that knowledge is only for a privileged few. That being said, I'm not encouraging you to leap all the way to the other end of the spectrum, into the Chuck E. Cheese of willful ignorance. Whereas with language, well, that usually involves inventing ridiculous words that don't make sense, and having just a general con- The use of language so much language is hard. Now, this is a whole heck of a lot more excusable with scientists, as they're frequently discovering brand new things that require new terms with which to identify. Them. Shit. Cut. Shit cut. See, I often feel that there's a kind of vocabulary penis envy going on. See, if you want to mingle with a whole bunch of guys in a room, you gotta just jerk them all off and they'll be your new friend. Guess where I'm cutting the editing off. Anyways. <laughs>